Hello, it is Friday, December 8th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Friday crossword today, which means it should be the first of two themeless crosswords for the week. And this themeless edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Aaron Spiller, Lake House Bros, Jake Rodkin, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them. They are, of course, among the benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, which means they uh, do keep this channel going. They sustain this series. I really do appreciate that. Thanks to them. Thanks to everybody who's a patron. And if you'd like to become one, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video where you can find all of the bonus uh, videos available to patrons. And that includes uh, the weekly mini puzzle pseudo speed solves, of which I have to do one today. It might be slightly late today, but um, it'll be today or tomorrow, I suppose. Uh, so look forward to that. And uh, there's also, of course, the Let's Check the Crosses mug for benefactors. Uh, you can also join the Daily Solve Discord chat server. There's a link in the description field to that underneath the video. It's a nice friendly chat community over there, so do check it out. And finally, please do consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and liking and commenting on the videos. Those are uh, big helps as well. And uh, they all these things chip in, and I really appreciate uh, all of it. So thanks for that. Let's get on to the puzzle. This is a Friday themeless crossword by Robert Logan, who's constructed a small handful of puzzles for the New York Times. It was edited, of course, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving and see what sort of themeless trickery we're in for today. All right, look at that, kind of an interesting grid. It looks like a, I don't know, a coin or maybe a button on a, <laughs> on a shirt button or something. Anyway, uh, presumably it won't represent anything thematically relevant at all. Uh, in this themeless puzzle. So buttloads, <laughs> boatloads, I'm sorry, or truckloads could be lots. I don't know. I don't know what this is. Question suggesting what odd behavior? What odd behavior? Are you okay? Um, not sure. Gains ground catches, no, not catches up, wouldn't be that, it would be pulls ahead. No, it's not long enough. Um, I don't know. Gains ground. I guess, I guess it could be catches up. You could gain ground by catching up. You don't need to, you don't need to actually pull ahead in order to gain ground. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Workers end of year wish. A bonus maybe? And pitiful could be sad probably? Comics sound effects, BAMs maybe, uh, sort of, you know, kind of associated with Batman, I think, because of the uh, the fight sequences in the 1960s Batman TV show, which every time I have cause to bring up, I must heartily recommend. It's extremely excellent in a way that if you've not seen it since you were maybe a child, you might be surprised by how clever that show is and how self-aware it is. Uh, city east of Tempe, that's Arizona. So, um, Yuma? No. Yuma, uh, what is it? I'm trying to think of an Arizona city that ends in an A in four letters. And I, I'm sure that there's a, a really obvious one that I'm just not able to recall at the moment. Abbreviation below the name of some businesses. Uh, est oh, established. Yeah, you could see that and then the year that the business was established on a sign or something. Highest degree attainable. So I have two ideas about this. It could be potentially a PhD, um, you know, doctor of philosophy, a very high academic degree, or it could be uh, nth, the nth degree to represent sort of in a punny, not a, not a punny way, but there's the, just, I just mean, because there's the pun indicator here suggesting something not literal. Uh, the nth degree doesn't, literally mean the highest possible, but you could use that in language to mean as such. So I don't think I have any way to infer which this actually is, but I think they'd both be valid, valid bits of fill. Defenses are prepared for them. Well, because I just said PhD, now I'm thinking sort of preparing an oral defense or a thes thesis, maybe you prepare to defend your thesis, yeah. So plural, because it says them, would be theses. There we go. Pioneer in the field of exobiology. 
Right. I think exobiology is biology dealing with outer space. And I think it bears relationship to the study of organisms on earth in extreme environments, like, um, like the lowest points of the, of the ocean, things like that. Anyway, I'm just, it doesn't help me <laughs> try to, I'm sort of talking through it in case I think of a, someone whose name would be relevant, but I think exo refers to the outer space bit. Let's see. Do I have anything for these now? Boatloads or truckloads? Not sure. Question suggesting what odd behavior. Oh, but no. Something what's that? I don't know. Okay. Uh, gains ground. I don't know. Well, let me just try nth and PhD and see if either of them looks immediately out of out of place. This doesn't look very good. We'd have to have a word that ends with sh and then immediately starts with h, whereas nth would allow my thought about that. What was that? Maybe bams is wrong. Boat loads or truck loads? Probably still ends in S. Oh, Carl Sagan, maybe? That would make sense. Um, a famous astronomer, he must have... I don't know enough about the field of exobiology to know what work would qualify as, as uh, making one a pioneer in that field, but I, I bet that's the answer. So gains ground. Oh, the, the gap closes the gap, narrows the gap. Okay, maybe this is wrong. Closes is not long enough. Narrows the gap. You're gaining ground in your opponent. You're narrowing the gap. Then that makes sense. Uh, conic sound effects, right? So, oh, pows would be another one. I shouldn't have put bams in there. That that was not that was not clever. I there I should have realized there would have been several options. Oh, Mesa, Mesa, Arizona. There we go. That's a city. Boat loads or truck loads? Ship? Oh, shipments. Right. I was thinking this meant lots of something. I. Yeah, I should have thought a bit more carefully about this. It could mean a literal boatload or a literal truckload, ship a shipment. Okay, utterance with one's hand on a Bible. Maybe you could be swearing, I do. There we go. Question suggesting what odd behavior. Who does that? There we go. That that does mean what odd behavior much more than the things that I was saying, which might mean that, but might be referring to something else. But who does that pretty explicitly means what odd behavior? Who does that? Kitty ride, a horsey. There we go. So, this is just referring to child childish language, really. And why does it need the question mark? Do we think? I suppose because kitty ride must is that a phrase unto itself. Usually, when the clue is an idiomatic expression, but it's being used in a punny way to clue a different, often more literal meaning. That that's often where the question mark comes in. So maybe kitty ride is, is used already to mean something more specific. I'm not sure. Anyway, so what could be a shrug? I don't know. Shrug. You sure about that? Want wanna want to make a bet? Wanna make a bet? I mean, I would think of this, I, I would probably say wanna bet or something like that instead of wanna make a bet, but I'm putting that in because it would fit. It fits the fill. I'm not certain this is correct. I'm going to leave it in there just for the purpose of checking crosses, but we'll see if it holds true. Areas to practice driving skills. A golf driving range? Oh, areas. Oh, right. Maybe this is horsey spelled E-Y. Okay, fair enough. It's not, wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been my first thought and wasn't as you could see, but that's fine. So ranges. Areas to practice driving skills. So I think this is a golf driving range. And then stop complaining. I didn't do anything wrong. No idea. Indianapolis 500 venue informally with the... Oh, I have no clue about this either. So this will be the race course where the Indianapolis 500 is held, but I, I just don't know. Tap room offering in brief. Okay, tap room. You could 
uh, be served a beer. You could be served an IPA, an India Pale Ale. So that that helps with my wanna idea. 1977 best-selling novel set in a hospital. Um, I'm not sure. Best-selling novel set in a hospital. Not sure. Okay, five-time five time NBA All-Star Thompson. I don't think I know this, unsurprisingly, <laughs> to uh, regular viewers. Join so as to work together. Oh, yeah, This I think this might be, the cross might be right, because this is a fairly distinctive word. Yoke, to yoke oxen together, so that, for instance, so that they work together. You know, you, you, you yoke them to the wagon or something, or a plow. Okay, blank does not protect you from love, but love, to some extent, protects you from blank. Jean Moreau. Um, Iyer? I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to come back to it. But I'm I'm fairly confident now about want to make a bet. Actually, uh, what about this famous bridge site? Not sure. And payment option, a debit debit card. There we go. Indianapolis 500 ve venue. Um, something yard. Oh, age does not protect you from love, but love to some extent protects you from age. I could I could imagine that being being the quotation. That that seems plausible to me. So what about this one? Famous bridge site, if this is yard. Oh, Rialto? Would that I'm just gonna try that one letter. Let's see. Stop complaining. I didn't do anything wrong. Oh, no apologies. There we go. Great. All right, good. This is all fitting. It very much feels like putting a puzzle together, uh, which I sort of enjoy, especially in a themeless puzzle. All right. Cartoon character often seen sucking his thumb. Linus from uh, Peanuts. He's often sucking his thumb and clutching his, his blanket, his security blanket, I guess. All right. What's going on? Question mark. So because this is not enclosed in quotation marks, it doesn't mean what's going on. I think rather it's the clue is essentially asking us what is going on. So the thing that's going on is the answer going on or something that means going on. Maybe what's going on. Oh, I don't know. I wish I could just jump right to that. I would feel clever, but I can't and I don't. What old memories often cause senior moments? No, senior, sorry, I was, there we go. What old memories often cause, is that, is that true though? Don't people say a senior moment when they can't remember something or, or when they sort of misremember something? Maybe that's what it means by old memories. Maybe it means the memory being old is what causes the thing. I don't know. I sort of feel like this is, I want this to be the answer, but I, even if I couldn't give you an incredibly pithy explanation as to why. Uh, maybe that's, maybe I'm having one of these, but let's see. Tip jar item, a one, for instance, a $1 bill. Gave rise to bread, as in, you know, you bred problems or you bred animals or something, you gave rise to them. Uh, seems plausible to me. What about this one? What a nod might indicate. Yeah, okay, maybe this isn't bread. I mean, I, what a nod might indicate. Yes, or what else? I'm not sure. Entertainment reference that began as a Usenet group. Interesting. What on earth is that? So Usenet are news groups. Those are a kind of, I think they still technically exist probably, but are very, I would suspect not very widely used relative to their heyday, but those these were kind of old internet discussion forums, basically. Um, what on earth is this? I don't know. Entertainment reference. Very interesting, but I don't know the answer. 
Blank Amendment, 2010's extension of the Kyoto Protocol. Oh, I hope I recognize this when I see it. I feel I might, but I can't think offhand. It'll be something related to climate change sort of agreements, but... All House speakers until 2007. That must have been men. Okay, there we go. Uh, made them look. Sorry, that's referring to the the U.S. House of Representatives. I should have been uh, specified that. The legislative body. Made them look. If one made them look, one turned heads. There we go. There we go. It is. It, it often really is useful to kind of try and use, because... Almost always, there are exceptions, and I think, um, what was it? What was the? Oh, here, what's going on? This is an this is an exception to what I was about to say. Uh, almost all clues in the New York Times crossword can be straightforwardly replaced with their answer to basically work in a sentence the same way. I mean, it might sound a little awkward if you're replacing a single word with a whole sentence or something, but but typically the part of speech should match and so on. And usually when it's not the case, it will be obvious. For instance, third most spoken language in the world, fairly obvious that that is, is you wouldn't replace that in a sentence, but you understand why this is serving as, as, a, as a reference to that. But something like stockpiles, get even with, not allowing for variation, uh, things like this should be able to be straightforwardly replaced in a sentence. And so I'm just saying that because that was how I arrived at turned heads. Made him look, I kind of read that and it just felt vague to me. But then as soon as I put it in a sentence, I said, you know, oh, that really made him look, that really turned heads. It just, I'm not saying you'll automatically get every answer every time, but it is really helpful um, because they should match the part of speech. And if they don't, the, the, the clue is either wrong or it's doing something a bit punnier like, like this, what's going on. And anyway, the answer to this one is attire. So this, this is, in a punny way, referring to what's going on you. It's your clothing, your attire. So there we go. All right. Preservers of crop biodiversity. I'm not sure. Uh, I think this probably is bread, though, now that we have turned heads to further confirm it. So, oh, seedlings. Preservers of crop biodiversity. That doesn't make any sense, though. Why would a seedling preserve biodiversity specifically seed seed banks those do that um i think there's a big one in norway maybe or something but uh yeah seed a seed bank so seeds are are preserved in order to um be able to i guess you know sort of reintroduce species that are in decline or or might otherwise go extinct oh imdb Entertainment reference that begin as a Usenet group. I, I had no idea that was the case. Wow, that's absolutely fascinating. Entertainment reference that began as a Usenet group. So the Internet Movie Database started on Usenet. Well, I really didn't know that. That goes, that's a uh, not quite as ridiculous as a comparable fact, which is that Rotten Tomatoes, the review aggregation website, started as a site that specifically collected reviews for the upcoming film Rush Hour. That uh, Rotten Tomatoes did not start as a sort of general interest film review aggregation website. It started specifically dedicated to the film Rush Hour. And when Rush Hour was delayed, the site's operators said, oh, well, maybe we should we should do this for other movies as well. So that's one of the most ludicrous Internet facts I know. But but there you go. All right. What a nod might indicate. I have no idea what this is somehow. Oh, Doha Amendment? It, it must be that. That's sort of not as familiar as I thought it was going to be, but but vaguely familiar. What a nod might indicate a bit. Oh, maybe in, in a silent auction or something like that. I think that must be what this is. All right. And then stockpiles amasses. There you go. If you stockpile wealth, you amass wealth. Jazz sobriquets. Oh, Satchmo. So a name given, you know, sort of uh, famous... I don't know, nickname, I suppose, given to Louis Armstrong. Output of the world's largest manufacturer of musical instruments. Uh, Yamaha's output. <laughs> it's a funny It's a funny way to have to phrase the clue. I guess because it's pluralized, they can't say world's largest manufacturer of musical instruments because that would be Yamaha rather than Yamaha's. 
but um, but there we have it. Uh, yeah, they make good pianos. Song title in both The Sound of Music and West Side Story. Oh, Maria. Okay, right. So I know the one from West Side Story. I don't think I know the one from The Sound of Music, but there we go. All right, broke. It could mean broke as in um, non-functional, but it could mean broke as in skint or has no money. Uh, why do I not see either? <laughs> not sure. Okay. Uh, certain verbal agreements. Amens, maybe? That would be a verbal way to indicate agreement. Um, broke. Oh, tamed, like an animal. Right, so broke could also mean, yeah, sort of, I don't know, domesticated is not quite the right word, but but uh, yeah, tamed in, in the sense of, of animal husbandry. All right. Regards. He, here's... It's not as tight a match as I would want. What about this? Words that guide. A credo. So, oh, right. Sort of um, a, a tenet of your you know, faith, for instance. Okay. So regards. No, it's not. Maybe it's his creed. Sorry. Similar. But, <laughs> but that would allow regards to be heeds. There we go. You could heed a creed. That rhymes. And then, oh, I forgot about this one after glancing at it quickly. Anyway, third most spoken language in the world, Hindu. There we go. All right. One's helping players get a round, question mark. Uh, something do's. One's helping players get a round. I don't know. I mean, it must be do's. I don't, why, do I, why do I not see what that is? I'm not sure. Okay, to barely run is to squeak, maybe? As in, a if a machine is barely running, it's kind of squeaking, maybe? Not sure that's right. Not allowing for variation. Well, now I have that cue there in my mind, and I can't think of other possibilities. What about this one? They contain fruits. Fruit rinds, maybe? Fruit is sort of inside. It's rind, I guess. Investors' considerations. Yields wouldn't fit. And it does specifically say considerations plural. Risks, maybe? Barely run. Oh. <laughs> to literally run bare, to, to run in a bare manner, in a sort of nude manner would be to streak. That's a clever clue. And you might wonder, why does this not have a question mark for uh, as a pun indicator? And it's because of what I was saying before about um, the, the question mark being there when the when the when the clue read normally is an existing idiomatic phrase. So barely run isn't, I mean, you know, it sounds like English and you could imagine it means, it, it, obviously if you said that normally, you'd, you'd assume it would mean this thing is barely working. It's hardly working. Uh, it's barely running, but it's not a sort of strongly defined single unit of two words. Um, it's not an existing idiomatic phrase. So uh, so I think that's that, that tends to be the the convention. The question marks are more likely to occur when they're subverting an existing phrase rather than just kind of ordinary language. Okay, not allowing for variation. I don't know. Dra drawers on chests, maybe. Or drawers on chests. It could be tattoo. Yeah, it is that. It is that. <laughs> tattoo artist. So obviously you read this and... On the, uh, the surface read, you want you want to read it as literally drawers you'd pull out of a chest of drawers of a bureau or something, uh, but it isn't that. It's people who draw on someone's chest, maybe, and the maybe is because obviously tattoos could be anywhere else on the body as well. So, you know, maybe the tattoo artists are the people who well, you know, they draw they are the drawers, and chests might be where they draw. Okay, figure whose name derives from the Hebrew for adversity. All right. Is it a satyr? Is it a satyr? never remember what the more accepted pronunciation of that is. I'm not sure that's the answer, but it seems plausible. Mythological creature. Let's see. Bouncing a penny into a cup, fancily 
shuffling cards, e.g. party? No, it's not that. I was thinking, not that this would be a, not that that figure has anything to do with, um, uh, with kind of Jewish mythology, but I was just thinking maybe the modern sort of word we use for it derives from Hebrew in some way, but I don't think it's the answer because bouncing a penny into a cup, fancily shuffling, for shuffling cards, e.g. are party tricks, and that's pretty clearly the answer. So, oh, Satan, that makes much more sense. Sorry, I don't know why I went to that, that other one first. That was odd. Anyway, balance sheet quantity net balance sheet net profits. No, net losses. Maybe. This doesn't look very good, though. Artist of La Maha de Nuda and La Maha Vestida. Uh, Goya. So that was I was completely wrong about that. About the net thing. So net assets. There we go. That looks better. Uber Eats is a food delivery service. And how about that G, you could say. And then if one slips, one errors, one makes a mistake. Now we have to finally answer these. So certain verbal agreement. I, as in the eyes have it, people who vote yes on something, you agree with the motion being proposed. And then the best-selling novel set in a hospital, it must be coma. I mean, that's a medical term, obviously. I don't know this novel at all, but it must be it. And then oh, the brickyard must be the informal name for the Indianapolis 500 venue. And then, oh, Clay Thompson. I think I've heard that name. I mean... I wouldn't have known it off the top of my head, but I've probably heard it once or twice anyway. Oh no, that's not it. We still have this. Middle of Middlesex. Right. So this is just referring to, um, as you, as is so often the case, a place name in, uh, in a clue refers to the language or dialect of that place. And so this is, this just means we're looking for a word that means middle in British English because Middlesex is in England and the UK. So, um, and then let's look at the cross here. One's helping players get around. So this is center because that's, that's just the, the British English spelling of center, but CAD do. Do I have something wrong here? Do I just not know what this is? Oh no, 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 no. Sorry. Hindu. I, uh, Hindi, sorry. Hindi, Hindu is the, is the religion. Hindi is the language. Sorry. Um, that was just completely poor entry on my part. So this is a C. These are caddies who are there help, helping players get a round of golf. And there we go. That was the Friday crossword. Very, I thought that was a very enjoyable, uh, very enjoyable Friday solve. Had to do a lot of, um, of kind of fitting things in with crosses uh, bit by bit to work through the whole solve. It wasn't um, brutally difficult, but uh, I just had to sort of constantly be paying attention to the crosses. And um, in a themeless puzzle, I think that's that kind of thing is necessary. Otherwise, what's the point? Um, so there we have it. And a nice pattern in the middle of the grid. I don't know if it signifies anything to the constructor, obviously, but uh, it was a nice looking puzzle. And we it meant we started off with these very long answers that I wasn't able to put in initially because I just had nothing to go on. But um, and yeah, then we had four cases of that all throughout the puzzle. But I like that. I really like the sort of curve of solving that and made some slightly silly, <laughs> silly mistakes. Uh, but that's okay. Got there in the end. And that was the Friday crossword. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow for another themeless crossword. Uh, very well could be the most difficult puzzle of the week. That's usually what we would expect on a Saturday. So do join me tomorrow and find out. But until then, Please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care.